Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast. On today's show, I have Brett Pomerantz. He's the Senior Director of Product for Retail Engagement at Cox Automotive. And today we're going to dive into some of the updates, strategies, and the vision for modern retailing. Some people have called it digital retailing, but today it's clear it's just how retailing is going to be done in automotive. Brett, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Brett, let's set a context here. We know that COVID changed many things. Uh, It forced dealers to consider being more transparent online. It accelerated software sales to allow consumers to do more of the price discovery online. We, We call those digital retailing tools as a general bundle, but it really forced people to change their process. And one of the things I want you to share with me is as you talk to dealers about the Cox platform for retailing, how are you weaving into the conversation that this is just not software devoid of process or software that plugs into a 40-year-old process, but in order to realize operational efficiencies, it's a team effort across all departments with new skills to be learned, new approaches to communication. How are you describing it to a dealer who says, I'm ready to embrace a modern retailing framework? Where does process and staffing and training come in? Yeah, I really like that question. Um, Process is so much a part of the retail purchase experience for both consumers and car dealerships today. Um, being able to have adaptable process, as we've seen during the pandemic, has been key. Um, the way we talk to most dealers about that, that process is that, number one, we want it to be connected to the consumer journey. So process is really key when we can personalize it for the consumer. So knowing what they've completed and what are some recommended next steps and actions to take, uh, informing the dealership on Um, how they can personalize the experience and then following through with a real workflow that they can use to make a repeatable process and be able to communicate with their customers in the way in which they want to be communicated with. Um, Following those types of key elements within the the process we've seen has significant benefits and results. So, Brett, one of the funny things, and and maybe not funny, it's just ironic things, when everyone was forced during COVID to consider digital retailing, a lot of it was because of necessity, right? Some of the showrooms were closed down, but it was all, all kind of couched in this idea, save customers time, make it easy. But I think the industry has found out that approaching this new framework for selling cars, having unified experience online in the stores, actually saving dealers time and money um, and not losing margin. What Do you think that dealers were surprised how broken and how time consuming their process was to sell a car? You know, I think that through, through the course of time, Um, in the absence of process, you create a lot of questions that leave the consumer up to sort of move in their own different directions, one of which could be negotiation, one of which could be spending more time in the shopping funnel and potentially seeking out competitive offers or competitive trade valuations. And I think by having that process and driving the conversation forward uh, in the way in which Honestly, consumers are contacting the dealerships because they want to purchase a car. And by meeting them with a trusted experience and a trusted process that answers their questions, that um, is transparent to the point where you're telling the consumer um, what options they have, allowing them to have some control. Um, And yet, uh, through 
going through those steps, you won't lose control as a dealer. As a matter of fact, you'll gain happier customers, you'll gain uh, increased conversion rates for those sales conversations and increased profits. We've seen it for almost a decade now that we've had products in the market um, that digital retailing experiences when they're followed properly lead to higher profits and higher close rates. And I think the pandemic and everything we're experiencing now has just um, put more people into the pool that are using it, um, but it's been you know, available and something that has been successful for a lot of dealerships for years. So I think we've just brought more people into um, that way of retailing and doing it within the digital environment. You know, Brett, before we talk about how digital retailing fits into the Cox ecosystem and, and the benefits of, well, using Cox products like Avin Solutions with your retailing platform, which of course is such a key tool on most dealerships. I have a question. The inventory shortages have really had some unintended consequences. Dealers are selling cars at MSRP, some over, but many models are being listed and sold at MSRP. So negotiation is taken off the table. And what dealers are seeing in this unique supply demand is that if you don't make the transaction about price, consumers will just move forward and use the tool and figure out their payments. Do you think that post inventory shortage, do you believe the culture has shifted, the awareness has shifted, that dealers could go to a one price model and be successful? You know, I think it does show that, um, you know, the consumer and the dealer need to come together around the car purchase. And in the absence of price negotiation and actually having a consumer um, be able to have a great experience versus feel as though they got the lowest absolute lowest um, purchase price for the car, um, that there's still a great market for selling cars uh, and that consumers aren't necessarily going to go away or go down the street. The other thing that I think is really critical is that while maybe new and used car prices are high, so are the trade valuations. And for years now, we've been talking about digital retailing puts the entire deal together so that you won't just have price negotiation at the top level be uh, the item that is uh, considered you know, negotiable, but how about the trade valuation or how about incentives or rebates or even just a great consumer experience being something that builds trust and actually moves you along the process uh, and closer to buying the car. So I think by you know, having this digital retailing experience, um, it really just uh, removes the obstacles and the challenges that are in um, the car buying, you know, overall experience of shopping and, and sort of the frustrations or stress that, that come with that. Um, and it allows sort of the path to the purchase to be highly visible for the consumer and something um, that even now with high prices, consumers uh, are doing. So, Brent. Let's switch to the tool set that Cox you know, has evolved. I remember it's over 10 years ago, I participated with uh, Cox and Dealer Track at a finance conference and the early, early versions of the Dealer Track online retailing tools. Uh, it's amazing how far things have come. One of the interesting pieces in the Cox uh, development, dealers should know, right? It works on any website. Uh, dealers can use this tool in the store and online, but you have some unique and powerful benefits with its integration in VIN solutions. What competitive edge does having a Cox retailing platform tightly integrated with VIN solutions do to allow the sales associate to be more effective, more efficient, and to close more deals. Yeah, we, we have some great 
Ving Solutions features available for um, the digital and, and just retailing purchase in general. Um, automotive intelligence is a, a product that takes the, the vast ecosystem of automotive data um, and matches it up to the consumer's behaviors and um, pages and vehicles they've visited, actions that they've taken, their likelihood to purchase for that make, that model, um, and at that time. And it brings it to the forefront to help dealers choose and, and prioritize um, customers that they're working with, as well as how they can um, take the next best action with them. And when you wrap that together with a digital retailing experience that consumer gets online, we bring all the digital activities into the CRM so you can see all of those buying patterns and those um, uh, different deal types and purchasing decisions that they have, uh, they have performed online. Uh, you then also have a very quick and easy way to start to desk the deal, whether it's you as a salesperson or your sales manager, at one click, we've pulled all the terms that the consumer penciled online so that you don't have to recreate or even re-enter any information. And then getting all that information, if you are updating a trade valuation or adding an incentive um, or updating the price, you're able to send that back to uh, your consumer uh, in a quick and easy way that brings them right back to the digital retailing experience that they were um, previously on when they submitted. Uh, there's a collaboration between salesperson and sales manager that allow that communication to happen. And I think designing that workflow and that process in a way that is more efficient helps us um, you know, with our, our sales, our BDC and our sales managers um, be able to adopt this digital retailing experience because if you have it on AutoTrader and Kelly and your dealer.com websites and you have a VIN solution CRM that maps those consumer experiences to a real repeatable dealer process, um, it's a great experience for you selling cars. And I think it's gonna show up for your consumers, particularly when each of you are saving a lot of time. And that's one of the, the critical elements of digital retailing that we wanna to bring to the forefront. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's take it a step further <clears throat> for dealers who have dealer.com website but have an, a different CRM. We know that uh, the complex amount of data that's involved in a deal um, isn't really supported very well in what we call the ADF data exchange format, which has not been updated since uh, the year 2000. I was very interested to hear from you that COTS is working on creating a new standard, a deal exchange packet, um, a modern data exchange that would allow a complex set of data that comes from your retailing tool to be pushed to other vendor platforms. This is something that's been well, well overdue. Um, where are we in being able to move, you know, data from Cox into, say, an eLeads or Cox into a drive-centric CRM if uh, API access, for the most part, doesn't even sufficiently cover the data fields that modern retailing needs? Yeah, so we have come to um, this deal exchange uh, as a model by which we have used internally at Cox Automotive throughout our digital retailing consumer experience and then our dealer software and solutions that need to use that. That same method by which I mentioned that a consumer can start a deal and all the information um, is uh, available in our Vin Solutions desking product without any data reentry. The same would be true for a deal that was sent and um, you would be able to see in Unify in our dealer track platform. Um, that same solution of the deal exchange is what we're gonna bring to market externally available for clients and partners that wanna solve those same problems. Data transformation of the deal between multiple systems, two or more, where each one of those solutions like a DR product and a desking product might have their own way of calculating a deal 
for um, determining the different sources of information like a trade or an incentive and being able to have a central source for that, that deal um, to be shared as well as, um, and this is the area that I feel like we, we really need to get right in the industry is that sharing the information, but also the updates that are made throughout the entire purchase experience so that um, our consumers online or our dealers in desking or dealers in F&I uh, are able to share in updates because we know that the consumer won't go through start to finish everything in one session online. It usually takes um, different conversations and updates that might be made either by the dealership, the salesperson, or by the consumer. And being able to um, receive those activity alerts whenever deal terms are updated so that it's shared amongst systems and that that allows us to really move the deal forward. Um, you don't want to start back at square one with the deal and have to unravel what happened. And so keeping this journey going forward, but doing it across multiple systems is really critical. And we think with the deal exchange, because we've done it internally at Cox, we're really able to bring this to market to improve OEM's ability to go from tier one to tier three, or to go from tier one into the CRM and desking tools that they use. Well, that is uh, music to my ears. A number of years ago, David Metter, myself, and a few other people tried to create the ADF uh, 2.0 standard and tried to address some of the more complex data handling and data collection that was going on in dealer websites. But that kind of died on the vine because, well, we didn't have any power to reprioritize development efforts within the different companies, especially within CRM. So I love this idea. I've, I've talked about this, that we need a universal black box that allows uh, deals to be moved between systems, better interoperability. And this is something I really want to uh, stay in touch with over the next year. So make sure you keep me in the loop. Um, Brett, one last question. The term of real-time decisioning, that, that phrase, this idea that early digital retailing was giving some estimates and then it moved to penny perfect. But oftentimes when these digital retailing tools collected this information, it was pushed to the dealership in a packet of some form. And then eventually that deal would be pushed out to be bought um, and that final contract approved. We're seeing more DR companies talk about real-time decisioning, not only here, but in Canada. So if somebody is completing their personal information, the car price is set, and they want to know this deal is approved instantaneously, where are you in the ecosystem right now across your clients? Is real-time decisioning available to everyone? Is it something still in beta? Where are you on that topic? Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up because credit, in addition to trade, are two of the biggest areas that we um, need. When I say we, I mean uh, our dealership body in selling a car and overcoming you know, anything that might be physical or need to be um, automated. So the, the great thing I love working at Cox Automotive is that we have uh, a, a paradigm of products, a portfolio within digital retailing. And so we have our Accelerate digital retailing solution. We're currently in pilot with instant credit decisions that include um, dealer rooftops who have adopted it, as well as uh, a large group of lenders that are a part of that. In addition, just recently, you may have seen, we announced the release of Essential. And completely automotive, automated e-commerce platform that um, is configurable and available um, for the e-commerce purchase. And it takes something like credit decisioning to a whole new level, personalized payments into personalized terms and lending and credit decisioning process that can be handled real time online with the consumer without any manual intervention by the sales manager, F&I manager, or lenders as part of that ecosystem. Um, so at Cox Automotive, we have sort of this holistic product offering where we know consumers won't all purchase 
a car one way. We also know that dealerships might you know, not sell cars, obviously, exactly the same way. And having this paradigm across our portfolio, um, where we're able to meet the needs of both of those parties um, in different areas is really critical. And I think no more other than credit and credit decisions, which is a really important step to the process and also something that if we can remove that, that pain and that stress for consumers when they're trying to get approved, um, give them their decisions in real time and allow them to experience something that saves them time, but also gives them just a great high customer satisfaction uh, in the experience. Um, that will move them forward towards the purchase. Uh, we know that just this past year, as the digitization of the purchase has happened throughout the pandemic, um, our consumer satisfaction levels are at an all-time high. Uh, our recent study listed them at 72% customer satisfaction um, in 2021. And in 2019, that number of satisfied customers was only 60%. That lift and the um, infusion of a digital retailing process and practice, um, which goes along with credit decisions, um, is a key contributor. Well, it's good to see the evolution. You know, a number of years ago, I wrote a book with uh, former Cox Automotive executive Thomas Gage called Just Faster, and um, followed that up two years later with the modern retailing playbook and i'm getting ready to update that again one more time because each year we're moving really closer to a seamless buying experience that allows the consumers at any level to do as much as they want online finish up in the store or do it all remotely brett dealer.com fin solutions Auto Trader, KBB, your digital retailing tool, and, and a host of other divisions within Cox Automotive has a tremendous amount of data. Those of you who are listening today, you should make sure you listen to the new podcast we recently released, talking with Bob George and um, the team at dealer.com and Auto Trader with Kevin Lesage about audiences. So let me bring it in. Brett, to you, what we found out is this new data lake that Cox had built, an independent dis, uh, division to manage the data between all these properties to really leverage it. What I'm seeing is for the first time, dealers could leverage this data set, send an email with a link that could actually be linked to a digital retailing experience to a recommended vehicle. So it's no longer sending static images of some generic offer that doesn't apply to them because of their credit score, but really um, smart communications that connect with a person, you know, Bob George was saying 91% accurate. And then they click on a link and they come right into the retailing experience. Do you see that as a viable future that, Instead of sending generic specials, we're identifying vehicles that we know they have a 90% chance of, of buying and then get, getting them right into the DR tool? Yes, I do. And um, you've got some great experts there and Bob George and Kevin Lesage. And, and um, I'm proud to have worked with them on a lot of this retail experience um, that we've created at, at Cox. And it's not only a viable solution, it is the future. Um, consumers want a personalized, uh, non-anonymous experience where you know them and you're able to tailor uh, their uh, purchase experience to their needs. And so uh, the solution that you mentioned um, that dealer.com and, and AutoTrader um, have been you know, working on allows us to personalize offers uh, to consumers using trade valuations and the actual owned vehicle that that customer has, land them on a retail page where they can see the new car that they're interested in and tie that together in the equity and the position they have with their trade uh, value and get them into the next step. So imagine as a consumer, you're now already started basically on step three 
where we are able to save you that much more time because we are using your identity graph, the information we know about you for the benefit after you have, of course, submitted a lead uh, to be able to you know, give you sort of that last mile decision to continue and actually purchase the vehicle as opposed to spend a lot of time circling in the, the buying and shopping mode. And um, we think it is gonna be a, a great winner. Uh, it'll increase conversion rates um, because we're saving a lot of time in that experience and giving you um, real important information about the purchase. There's a lot of value there. Um, we've done the research. We've created um, informational pages that tailor it to you, your specific customer. And um, I have no doubt that you know, we will, um, Bob and Kevin and team will prove that out. Um, I've seen some of the, the early uh, screens and designs and it, it looks really promising. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's personalize it. I have a Honda Pilot um, that is just about paid off. I financed it. And, and this would be my second Honda Pilot. I had one up in New Jersey, one here in Florida. If I got an email that said, hey, Brian, um, we know you, you have a three-year-old Pilot and uh, you may want to upgrade because the new pilots are really exciting. Uh, just click on this link. It will show you what will, you know, give you for that exact vehicle. And uh, we know, you know, your history with us. Um, you'll be able to know exactly what that trade's worth, what your new payment will be. I mean, like if it was just one click and I went in and said, hey, do you want to confirm it's this vehicle? You know, okay, what's the current mileage? Just a couple things because they know the, you know, the VIN of the vehicle. I mean, it couldn't be any easier. If I was saying, no, I'm going to keep this car five or six years, drive it into the ground. Um, but somebody said, hey, uh, look at this beautiful new model and here, here's your payment. Maybe that would change my mind. And I think it's only going to happen when we unify the DMS data, uh, the CRM data with the email marketing campaigns, with the digital retailing tools. And that to me sounds like a personalized experience that would even get me to reconsider a car that, you know, maybe I had one plan for to get me into something new. And I, I don't think you're alone in that. I think that the future within the automotive space will be more rapid, repeatable um, purchases. I think the um, length of time that you own your car uh, will shorten. I think the ability to finance with different financing options, uh, subscription services, you name it, will uh, continue. I think it'll be easier to purchase from a digital experience perspective. And I think that experience that was just put in front of you will have a great value proposition for why you should purpose. Um, I'm sorry, why you should purchase. And so um, the, the car buying process for a lot of people can be impulsive. However, you gotta put a reason in front of a customer um, that they go, you know, can move forward or should move forward and um, make it easy. Um, because when you can combine those types of uh, key value props within uh, the, the digital experience, um, the, the results and, and your consumers um, will respond. Uh, and I think that you'll we'll start seeing uh, shortening length of ownership uh, because consumers will buy more often. Um, they will go through lease and short-term financing and um, we'll need great ways of capturing that audience in the critical moment that uh, they're ready to purchase and putting, uh, putting that easy button in front of them. Well, I've watched the evolution of the Cox uh, digital retailing platform. And now we're just going to say retailing platform. And it's amazing that the advances that are being made each year. And of course, uh, just in a few days, we have the Automotive Analytics and Attribution Summit, November 14th, 15th, 16th in beautiful Palm Beach. The team at Cox Automotive will be there to answer your questions about their whole software suite and digital retailing tools. But I also wanna encourage those of you who can't attend live, remember you can still purchase a virtual ticket and all of the keynotes, all of the panels, all the workshops are being recorded and filmed and available for 90 days. So if you can't make it out to Florida, well, you should come out to the virtual experience and enjoy amazing content 
that you can replay with your team and learn in a very efficient way. If this is the first time you're listening to a podcast, you should know that each week I interview industry leaders, disruptors, and well, thought leaders that are working with dealers to make retail more efficient and a greater experience for the consumers we serve. So check out the dozens of other sessions that I've recorded on your favorite podcast channel, or you can go to brianpash.libsyn, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. Brett, thanks so much for your time today. Um, You're coming down to AAS, correct? I will be there November 15th. Um, Thank you very much for having me. And um, I appreciate uh, this partnership and in the industry that we have here and evolving it. And I look forward to seeing uh, all the dealers that'll be coming to the AAS Summit. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So if you can't make it live, get your virtual ticket, go to automotiveattributionsummit.com. And thank you for your time. And we look forward to spending more time in the future on a future podcast session. Thank you.